Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 4 of our Feed the Beast Neotech Let's Play and I have some guys just creepily watching me with their bows and arrows. There's four of them, one's hitting behind the banner back there and I'm not entirely sure why they're there. I also have a zombie pigment in the background but I think if I just run inside I'll be fine. Hello chicken. They don't seem happy about that. So I've been doing a bit of work off camera here and that was mainly setting up a process for each one of the ores we got out of our steam quarry. However, I'm out of bronze drills at the moment so there's nothing actually coming out of them. However, we do have our iron, our copper, our tin, gold, and sulfur coal, redstone, and bauxite. I also have a bunch of spare iron and copper in these guys because unfortunately these guys are pretty much full. Not completely full, but almost so. Unfortunately, we can't use them anymore like I have to I had to take access out nevertheless I do have this booking quill in my inventory here and I've gone ahead and marked down everything we're going to need to make all the parts for pumps motors pistons robot arms and analog circuits and cables and everything so that is to make a plate I need one compressor to make a rod I need a cutting machine to make a wire I need a compressor into a wire mill to make a bolt I need double cutting machine to make a rain, cutting machine compressor, curd plate, two compressors, fine wire, two wire mills. So in total, we're going to make five compressors, four cutting machines, and three wire mills. Now, I very much could do this in a system where everything gets filtered through the same compressor, everything gets filtered through the same wire mill, and everything gets filtered through the same cutting machine, just the way that the way modern industrialization pipes work. Like, you can overlap them like this, as we've seen in our chaotic mess. However, I just want the process to be very straightforward. I can throw, say, 20 steel, 13 iron, and 12 copper in a chest, and all of those we've made into plates. I don't need to worry about things getting split around or anything, so if I throw whatever ingots, like, say I wanted, I don't know, that, right? Say this was my chest right here, right? I want to throw all of these in. All of those would become plates. And then when, I, then when I'm done, all of them are plates. Instead of having to throw, say, five gold in and they get half plates, half wires, or something like that. So it's a bit of extra work, and it's probably not the best thing to do at all of the Steam Age. However, I think it would be a lot more efficient to use it in the Steam Age. And then it's probably something we can keep using, luckily, until a while down into the LV Age. And then eventually we'll get to MV and we won't need them anymore. So luckily, we already have a wire mill um, cutting machine going into mixer actually and a compressor however i still need four compressors three cutting machines and two wire mills so we're gonna go ahead and make those i do have a few extra steel parts in here that i got from request so those are going to be useful and that should cut us down on our steel usage a bit but we're still going to end up needing a lot of steel and bronze for this as i did for these guys here I made a slight miscalculation. Welcome to the Undergarden. <laughs> now, the reason we're actually in this biome is because we need diamonds, unfortunately. And I wasn't exactly planning for that because, unfortunately, you need diamonds for the cutting machines. And I completely spaced out on that. However, luckily, you can access diamonds in the underground. These ores occur at high levels, around Y level 112, dig up, and the best place to dig is around Y level 20, or 120, sorry. So we're going to head up to the roof. Unfortunately, I didn't bring any blocks with me to do so, but it should be pretty easy to get up there. But yeah, you need diamonds for the cutting machines, and for some reason, I just completely blanked on that. So let's go on a little mining adventure and see what else we can find while we're here. Oh, we actually found diamonds. Okay. See, I was just thinking while recording and endlessly mining, which wasn't actually that far. We only did this small little loop here. But while endlessly mining, I've been thinking to myself, you know what? It would probably be easier just to make a pressure chamber for a pneumatic craft or even just make an electric quarry so we can use steel drills to get diamonds. But those would also be regular diamonds, so that really wouldn't affect it. But we could make the pressure chamber. And I feel validated coming to the undergarden. Oh, wow. Eight diamonds. Let's go. And so each one of these should turn into one. That's perfect. And we need three, I think. So it's not too bad. So we'll head home and smelt up our diamonds. And hopefully there's no pillagers waiting for us. Coast is clear.
and a small undergarden trip later, we actually have all of the machines we need now. So this shouldn't be too bad to set up. I'm probably going to try to use the same steam because I'm pretty sure we're like omega overproducing steam at the moment. So I should be fine. However, I do want to go back this way. Ooh, there's a cave back here. Well, grab some stone, fill it in. What can they say? For some reason, I filled in way more of that than I probably should have. But our pipes are right here, right? Yeah, they are. So I want to use this wall, kind of, maybe. We'll see. Because the most processes are two, right? So everything can go in barrel, double process, down. So if I just do something like this... I'm not sure why I'm doing this manually, or one by one, sorry. Let me break out the back wall. And the first one we want is ingot to plate, obviously, so that is simply just a compressor. Then we want ingot to rod, so that is a cutting machine. And then ingot compressor to wire mill, so we need wire mill at the bottom, and then compressor up top. Then we need double cutting machine. Oh, which means that needs to break. And also, this means we're going to actually have a use for a creosote, as I'm going to be pumping lubricant into all of these, which is very simple to do. We will grab our... Where is it? We have a spare fluid mixer right here, and I will just pump a redstone out of this, and we will actually pump our lubricant, I guess, out of any of our backpacks would work, and I'll just make a supply of lubricant on full access to all of our cutting machines so we don't run out. But the next one we need here is ingot. So cutting machine into compressor. Nope, that's the wrong one. And then we need double wire mill, double compressor. Pretty easy. And I should have enough barrels on hand here. So, oh, that's not how you place them. Wow, looks pretty nice. I won't complain. So basically, what I'm going to do is this will be just placed in. They'll have an item pipe in the back here. I'm going to have an access. Ooh, that doesn't really work now, does it? Awkward. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to destroy it. I'll just put the access hats on this side. There we go. Not inconvenient at all. <laughs> Uh, no, I want to take out the roof on this side and then fill in more holes. Yeah, that's not too bad. We'll do access hatch over here. But yeah, basically what I'll do is I will have item transfer because these don't automatically pull in, unfortunately, but I can just pipe items down into each one of them and then do the same thing where we just take our wrench and shift right click the access output on bottoms. Bottom, 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 and then change all of these to auto eject. Now, if I've done everything right here, which I don't think I have since I haven't actually tested this yet, I've laid out everything in my inventory to go through all seven sets of machines here. So I could do this, I could do that, copper, this, 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 and that. Everything seems to... Nope, this one's not running. Okay, what about this one? Nope, that one's not running either. This one is running though, however, so we're getting copper wires, we're getting bolts, rings, curved plates, and nothing oh this isn't going to work how did i think that was going to work i need to compress these into plates what am i trying to make here curved plates rings boom this is for wires hmm right so this needs a compressor right i forgot a compressor which means this entire setup is going to look jank unfortunate yep that is something i did and you might have noticed already, and you might have already wrote in the comments below. However, I need a compressor on this line for this to actually work. Also, these guys aren't working back here, but that's a very simple fix. I'm using the pipe config card, so this is actually pretty useful to show off. If you hold shift over this, it says if you shift right click an item pipe connection to save its settings in the card. So since all these ones are already extracting and I turned the whitelist off and set them to extract, I can shift right click. And then if I just right click on these guys back here, it will automatically set. And then same if I shift right click those ones, which are just whitelist off basically, I can just right click on the back. Now down here, I have just in one of my many fluid tanks of creosote, just making a bunch of lubricant in the back. Now I'm not entirely sure how much lubricant, yeah, they all, they all hold 16 buckets. So eventually I'm actually just going to need to connect that up. But for now, I, would, I just threw an empty tank down there and then we can just keep replacing the tanks as we go. It's not too big of a deal. In this case, I have five buckets left. But yeah, I'm going to need the compressor on this line. All right, round two. Nice. Okay, it's compressing, making wire, and then it should go in here. Copper wire into fine wire. And perfect. So now we have fine wire, uh, curved plates, frames, bolts, copper wire, rods, and plates all on demand. So now what I can do is simply label them all, which won't be too bad. I can put the labels all up here or actually down here might be better. We'll see how I go about it. However, I'm going to label them all and then we can start mass producing all the things we need for these guys, which will mainly be tin, 
copper and steel. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of steel, tin, and that's probably it. Copper, a bit of copper. I don't need much bronze, it seems like, which is nice. However, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything. Gold, copper. Yeah, no, it's pretty much just copper, gold, and steel. Or copper, tin, and steel. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck a I'm going to chuck a bunch of steel and everything, actually. So you can get a stack of steel. 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 And you can get a stack of steel. Why not? Everyone can have a stack of steel. I was just making plates, rods. I already forgot to label them. This was a bad idea. Bolts, rings. You probably don't need that many rings. Or curved plates for that matter. But hey, why not? Now, with all of our steam age behind us, there isn't anything left in this age. So we can finally move on. This is a little too close. We can finally move on to the LV and me chapter. So let's get started. I've let everything over here smelt up and let's just say we should be pretty well equipped to move into the LV age here in just a second. So the first thing I want to do in the age is actually progress towards the quarry. Now there are a few other things in here like applied energistics However, our storage system isn't that dire that we're going to need applied energistics at the moment. And also, I'm not in a permanent place where I'm living yet. So until this steam age is done and I have my LVH building built, I don't really want to be studying applied energistics just quite yet. So what I want to do is progress towards the electric quarry. Now, I will not be getting towards the electric quarry this episode. What we will be doing is getting our EBF. Now, if you've played Greg Tech before, you know what an EBF is. And if you don't know what an electric blast furnace is, it is basically a multi-block that is a giant furnace and it is something that you can upgrade now in modern industrialization there is only two tiers to the coils you can upgrade which is the cooper nickel and the canthal compared to greg tech where there are tens dozens depending on what tier you're playing with there's a lot of coil variants this pack only does carry the two but that is still a very nice thing to have also, we're not going to get this right now. However, you can share the walls of multi block structures. So to be fair, we could have shared the walls of these uh, fire clay bricks, most likely. I'm not actually sure. I've never tested with these. But for your EBFs, we're going to be doing a four pattern. So connecting four and then using the four middle blocks to connect them all. You'll see once we set up huge factories. But for now, we're only going to be building the one. So let's just jump right into the LVH. Now, the first thing it wants us to do is make an LV steam turbine. Now, if we click on this recipe tree right here, I haven't showed this off before, but this is a key feature of EMI, otherwise known as, I always forget what it's called, Expropriated Matter Insights. Yep, that's what EMI stands for, if you didn't know. So if you click on view recipe tree right here, you can actually see everything you're going to need to craft a steam turbine. It'll give you the total cost. Oh, I clicked on it. It'll give you the total cost of the entire steam turbine right here, which is very easy to see. Now, this may look daunting or overwhelming, and simply I can just collapse all of these and it won't look daunting at all. Give me one second. Look at that. It doesn't look daunting now, and it still shows us all the things we're going to need. And these are all things we've already made. We've made battery alloy, we have all of the plates, bolts rings, curved plates, wires, sugarcane, we have all of this already on craft, so none of this is actually a worry. And let's get our first four steam turbines maybe, and we'll start with that and see how it goes from there. That's our first four steam turbines done. Now, I don't actually know if I need four steam turbines. I'm used to Greg Tech turbines that look something like this, and then you have like the four back. However, these guys are just single block machines, so I'm not entirely sure why I did this. However, we do have four turbines now, so those are going to be very useful. Now, the next thing we need here is a storage unit to actually store all of our power because we're going to be mixing a lot of excess power. So this guy here is just a bunch of batteries and battery alloy, which is very simple to make. Ooh. 
Oh, okay, I was going to say no achievement, but there's a quest complete for the LV storage unit. Now, this guy does give us some batteries and motors as a quest reward, and it gives us another storage unit. So now we actually have plenty, plenty of storage. However, we're not quite done yet. It does also want us to make two steel boilers to give into the quest, which is kind of weird, but I guess we have to make some more steel boilers now. And I don't think... Oh, I do have an extra bronze machine case in here, so I just chuck some things into here maybe yeah maybe i can get away with this i don't know if i actually have everything on me to make a boiler because i don't think i have much bronze but we'll see i don't have any bronze plates not a single one they're all downstairs okie doke now i will say luckily i have exactly enough fire clay bricks to make two of these never mind wait no you can use steel grade which also needs fire clay bricks and i don't think i have any more unfortunate but it is only brick dust correct yeah, it's just brick dust and clay, which I have plenty of clay, and I should have brick dust on me somewhere. There we go. And here's our steel boiler, so we should be able to actually just hand this straight in. Oh, it just wants two in the inventory? Oh, I thought I actually wanted us to hand it in. Well, we get free 12 steel for that, and I may as well collect that as well. Very useful things. Now, it wants us to make heat-proof casing, which is pretty simple. This guy here is just in bar, which I should have plenty of. And I already had nickel dust on me. Did I? No, I didn't. That's the nickel dust I made. Okay, I was going to say, because I put everything in this backpack, but I also put some stuff in this backpack. I was confused for a second. I thought I already had nickel dust. Just appeared in nowhere. However, one heat proof casing, and this gives us six more. And we need five for the quest, so we already have all the heat proof casing we need for the thing. You need to make one, and you get it all. Pretty simple. So the next thing we got to make here is a polarizer. And this guy is also very simple. It is just more inductors, which we should have already. Let me get rid of all this stuff and grab some of that. Grab some of this. That, that. Let me get rid of most of this stuff. You start to end up with a lot of stuff in your inventory while crafting or while multi-crafting. So to be fair, an ME storage system would be very, very useful right now. However, I was complacent and didn't feel like making one because you do it in every pack. Like, there's always just an ME system. Oh, what's next? Oh, I got, guys, got to build my ME system. We're definitely going to do it eventually. Probably next episode, too, once we get around to our... Uh, what's the thing called? The electric quarry. So, yeah, once we get to the electric quarry, we'll probably end up making one. But that's our polarizer done. And, yeah, now we can make our EVF. So, it is Cooper Nickel. And then we also need the electric blast furnace here. Which means we actually need to use the polarizer to make this magnetic we cooper nickel. So we'll have to set it up. But the cooper nickel itself is very simple. It is just mixed. If we can find the recipe. I actually pinned it already. It is just mixed copper and nickel dust. So I'm just going to use our mixer downstairs for our rubber. Just so I don't have to make another one. Because, well, it would just take me more time. And yeah, it's pretty simple. So I'll take nickel out of here. And I already have the copper dust made. So we'll just do something like this. Where's my last copper? There we go. And yeah, we're just making Cooper Nickel on demand now. Because why not? And it wants an LV energy hatch as well. Oh, my battery always upstairs. Yeah, that's annoying. I should be able to get away with just using these furnaces as well. So for the Cooper Nickel coils, I'm going to just need wire. And I think that's all I'm going to need for the Cooper Nickel, correct? Because this is also what gets polarized. So yeah, we're just going to throw it all in our... Which wires? This guy right here. There we go. That does process. Nice. I was worried for a second. I thought I was going to have to make the actual machines. But no, they do work in the steam and all that. Good to know. This guy should be done. Nope, it's still going. Okay. Well, we, we're going to have a lot of Cooper Nickel, which is good. We need it all, so it's fine. However, there's a few things I'm missing here, and that is a machine hole for that. I have everything I need. So I guess it's just setting up the power itself, and yeah, that's about it. Oh, we do need the output and input hatches too. So I'll grab a hopper and some iron. Why does it do that? I don't know why it grabs so much out at once. It is very bizarre. I don't, I, that's one thing I've noticed about the, what are these things called? The barrels? They just, I don't know, they grab as much iron as you want. Like, I can grab, oh, single click, right? Shift, single click. Hear this? Okay, wait, no, it's not shift. Just one click, okay? Let me toss it all in. One click. Why did I get three stacks? It just doesn't make sense now, does it? However, I do need to make two steel casings, and then one input, one output. There we go. Good, I was going to say, I haven't made those, right? And I also need a blast furnace, which off the top of my head, couldn't tell you how you make one. 
And that's not gonna tell me either. I actually need this pinned. I'm assuming it's a furnace with iron. Oh, it's a furnace with iron. We've made one before this year, so I already forgot. And our cooper nickel wires are done. So I can go ahead and make cables out of them. I don't have any rubber on me. How many did I want for the quest? Eight. Okay, we're gonna need a lot more than that. But that's fine. We have plenty of cooper nickel to go around. And I have a furnace on me. Yes, I do. A few more. And now we're just waiting on the last one. And then we gotta actually set it up outside. So we can make some steam. But I guess I could also just jank this downstairs real quick. Just so we can set it up all at once. Do I really want to do that? Oh, I need another water pump also. Yeah, I do need a water pump. Or what I could do is very scuffly take this guy and bring the water straight up to the ceiling. That is my base. What's exactly under here? Let's go see exactly where that hole is and see what we can do with a little bit of water piping so I don't have to build a new pipe for now. Where does that come up? That comes up in probably the worst spot possible, I'm not going to lie. But I could also run the feed off of here. You know what? We're going to do it before, why not? Whoever said you can stop me. Is that where my berries are? No, it's not. Okay, good. Oh, am I not so touch mode? I need grass so I can actually replace the dirt. There we go. And for now, we'll just let the grass regrow, hopefully while we're busy. And then we can replace it with uh, our replacement tool. But nevertheless, we're going to run a weird water pipe cable through our base for some reason, rather than actually being efficient. This is a temporary setup. Remember, temporary setup just to get our EPF done. Don't kill me. Yummy bread. So that should be more than enough. That is not more than enough. What am I missing? Oh, rubber. Well, rubber is not a problem around these parts. I will tell you that. There we go. That is the eight we need for the quest. And yeah, we can grab everything else in a second here. However, we do need this guy here. So that is seven Cooper nickel wires. But that does mean I'm going to need to set this up immediately, which means I'm going to need a bunch more red fluid pipes. How many fluid pipes do I have? I have 26. Hey, you know what? This should work. I wonder if I actually have any roses left. I did go rose hunting. Do I have any left? I have weed roots. Those work. I'm not entirely sure why I designed my base like this. I'm constantly jumping up and down the stairs. Very, very far from efficient, but it is what it is. Time to hijack you. I don't think this will be enough red fluid pipes, I'm going to be honest. Let's see. Okay, for some reason that didn't connect, but that's fine. Oh, you know what? This is actually plenty of enough. Not even a worry. So, house is here. Let's just do a temporary setup, right? Nothing too important or major. Just something like that. Pipe configurator. Boom, 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 boom. And we need our boilers. If I was a boiler, where would I be? There we go. Also, I'm pretty sure it says in the quest book. No, it doesn't say in the quest book here. It says something about boilers. Oh, to fuel one LV steam turbine, you'll need either. Okay, right. So only two of these boilers will fuel one turbine at the moment, but that's fine. We'll just set up one of our four turbines that we built. <laughs> Our water should be fine. Surely there's not going to be any problems in the downtime. Anyways, I'll grab two stacks of coal. For some reason, the coal dust falls out fine, but when it comes to the other one, it just doesn't want to. Ooh, we should sleep. It is not a good idea to go operate at night in the dark. Ooh, I didn't even read that. One recipe to rule them all. Oh, that's sick. What are the range reference? Gotta love them. Hello, Mr. Zombie. Oh. Oh, what are you? Okay. There's just a lot of mobs outside tonight, I guess. Oh, there's so many of these guys. Oh, they drop ender pearls, though. Oh, okay, and I've got teleported. Hello, Mr. Spider. Free ender pearls, though. I'll take them. Always useful. And now my backpacks are getting all messed up. Quite unfortunate. But here we go. We can actually set up our first turbine here, which is in one of our bags. LV turbine. Okay, sir. You do not need to do that. Oh, and we broke our wheat field because of you. Very not nice. Also pipes and i want this to extract extract and insert and that will make steam in a second maybe make steam in a second why are you not getting steam it has no water apparently that is not enough water to fuel my base these are not connected never mind what am i thinking there we go problem solved there we go okay now they're making steam this guy is making way more power than i need so i'm gonna make the two banks that they have and grab some tin cables. Perfect. So for now, we'll just do off like this, I guess. I don't know. 
Perfect. And are these getting power? No, they're not. So do these need to be set to export mode? Maybe? Nope. That's not what I want to do. Nope. Hmm. Why don't you want to export? I mean, those are both the imports. Am I crazy? I'm dumb. This works like a bad box in industrial craft or even I guess probably Greg Tech also has these. Maybe I'm not entirely sure. This is the output. Every other side is an input. All I had to do was change them around. Pretty simple. And now this guy's nice little animation steam turbine is running again. However, I want to say these might be able to fuel themselves, but maybe not. Anyways, we're producing a decent amount of EU per tick. I don't actually know the exact amount, but it seems like maybe 0.1 EU per tick or something. It's split between two, so I can't actually tell. However, we can go ahead and set our polarizer up off of this. So we'll come out like so and grab a polarizer out of here. And I can shift right click on the input and polarize some Cooper nickel coils. And we only need seven of them. All right, while we wait for our Cooper nickel to finish in here, which it already has actually, I was just going to set up my EBF real quick. Well, everything I can for my EBF. So we'll do the input energy hatch in the back just so we can connect it easily. I will do item input on the side, I guess. Let's see how we want to do this. So we'll do item input here and I'll do item output there. Yeah, that works. Anyways, we'll grab these craft the electric blast furnace we need those two items there we go craft the electric blast furnace stick that directly in the middle and then yeah if we hold this you can actually see the multi-block render but luckily i do know the ebf off the top of my head thankfully since i've built these so many times at this point but i should be able to go ahead and claim all of these guys which will allow us to actually build the thing and i think there's another one in here yes there is we already claimed that never mind so something like this and this actually does not give us enough i just realized also there's no maintenance hatches or muffler hatches in this pack which i like noticed earlier but i've only just now sunk it in that there's no none of that oh we do actually have the rest of the applications on us already never mind false alarm okay i say this but this doesn't look complete nope that's a valid shape cool Awesome. So our, oh, it, did, it definitely did because these did update texture. These just didn't connect, which is fine. It still looks good. Hey, our EBF is done. So now we are like officially in the LV age. And the first thing I want to do is actually make some aluminum. So if you saw my backpack earlier, I have one of my backpacks. Yes, I have blocks of bauxite in them. So I'm going to just stick our blocks of bauxite inside these guys. And I do need some barrels or some chests. Let's go with chests for now. And we'll do auto output, auto input, same as before. And yeah, this guy will slowly but surely make us aluminum. And that is our current recipe. Obviously, once we get electrolysis, this will no longer be a recipe because right now we have to spend 100 seconds to convert one block of bauxite into one aluminum ingot. Not efficient at all. However, once we can make a electrolyzer, we can convert 10 bauxite dust into four aluminum dust, which will take 60 seconds. And then each one of these takes 10 seconds to smelt in the aluminum blast furnace. Still a total of 100 seconds, but we're getting four aluminum per instead of just one. Because we're getting right now nine bauxite dust to one ingot. Now we'll be getting 10 bauxite dusts to four ingots. So it's about 100 seconds, but we're still we're getting three times the ingots minus one dust or plus one dust already. So pretty much the same overall, but it's the exact same amount of time. Just a much more efficient recipe. However, as you see, this guy has an efficiency meter here. That is because all electric machines in this pack will overclock if they are doing the same process over and over. So as soon as you see that, it ticked up to one. So that means after one recipe of the exact same recipe has been used in this thing, it has ticked up. So meaning after 64 bauxite blocks go through our electric blast furnace, this guy will be at max efficiency, meaning they encourage you to make single machine setups for every single process so that you can maximize efficiency. I like that. As you see in the basement, we've already done that for our steam furnaces. Mind you, our steam machines don't have that quality to them. They don't actually like accelerate. However, we do have our first aluminum ingot and we do get free 16 ingots for that. So that is really nice. Now, I probably should go ahead and run away and make an electrolyzer right away just so we can make better recipes. However, this guy is actually not too bad, but it does require a lot more aluminum than I do have access to at the moment with this 16. So we'll just let this guy run, not too big of a deal. We will be getting a lot more once we set up our electric board here. 
However, that is something we'll be doing the next episode and exploring some of the Dire Things mod because there are some interesting things you can do with the quarry now, such as creating mob farms, getting ancient debris. There's there's a lot of things that we can do with the electric quarry. However, guys, it is getting dark outside, so I need to run inside and sleep real quick so we can get the daytime back. That is where we're going to end off today's episode. We finally got our start into the LV age, and I think we're going to be making rapid progression through this pack. So what I'm going to do next episode is hopefully focus on finishing parts of the LV age, but also getting our first factory built for the LV age. We'll probably do a building time lapse. I'm going to be gathering resources for the next few hours and hopefully get a full factory built at the start of the next episode. Start getting all of our LV machines moved in there and see what kind of great madness I can create for this series. But nevertheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode it was very fun to start progressing into our technical age if you guys did enjoy please leave a like on the video it means a lot if you learned something or if you would like to teach me something about modern industrialization or this pack in general leave it in the comments below i do read them all and if you guys don't want to miss any future uploads or any other uploads on the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button <laughs> thanks for watching everybody Bye bye